Uh, personal integrity is a big deal. People want to know that when you give your word, you will keep your word. So I try to make very few promises, but the promises I make, I know I will be able to keep. Sharon, welcome to Timelines. Thank you so much, Bill. It's taken a while for me to get here, but I'm glad we're here doing this today. Well, there's about 12 more days till election, and you're running for Congress. And it's yes. a primary, so thank you. It's, you're busy, and we made uh, it. Always busy. You know, a campaign is, is busyness. That's what you do. First question is, this is unique. Where physically did you grow up? Oh, literally, I grew up right here. This is the Atlantis Casino. And less than a block down the road south here uh, was my childhood home. Very good. So uh, Reno must have been a really neat place back then. It's neat now. I love Reno. I've been here about five years. I, I, by choice, I mean, the Truckee River is gorgeous. What mm -hmm. was it like back then? Well, of course, we were three miles from the Truckee River where I lived, and we were rural. Uh, where the convention <laughs> center right. is now was an onion field, and I, as a child, watched the convention center being built. In fact, I learned to drive in the convention center parking lot. So I have watched and grown up with Reno. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun town. I can just can imagine what it was like when it was really small because it's grown so much. Even in the five years I've been here, it's just exploded. That, that's true, but it still has a small town quality because of uh, if you've been raised here, you've graduated right. like I did from local high school. I graduated from Wooster High School Worcester, and, and from the University of Nevada, Reno. So I, I still run into people that I know or that know people that I know. But uh, I'll tell you, it still doesn't have that small town quality as uh, the rural towns do you know i've lived in ely for three years winnemucca for 11 years and tonopah for eight years and the small town quality is to be known and to know others and regardless of your political persuasions or uh, or, or or any of your background uh, people take care of one another in those yeah. small communities because that's who you have there are really some really fun small communities out along highway mm -hmm. 50 and just they're they're, they're really right. unique and they are tight but you're at tonopah which is yeah, go through there. You know, that's the halfway spot between here and Las Vegas. Of course it is. Well, <laughs> Talk about the middle ask of state. Me, people ask me about the Tonopah State, you know, eight years there. But I, I enjoyed it. That's where I got my political start. I served on school board there in my county for a term. Uh, I love that community. I still love that community. Yeah. I have friends there. There's some neat old hotels there. Yes, too. there are. It's supposed to be haunted, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that that brings the tourists in, doesn't right. it? When we when we talk about those mining communities, it, it, they do have a lot of history. And I think there's like the clown is the clown hotel there by uh, graveyards are famous like crazy. Yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it's right, the graveyard all the way around it. This that's old right. west. It's very western. Um, of course, now it's not in congressional district too, but Winnemucca and Ely are in congressional too. Right. So I've had an opportunity to revisit. Um, well, not Ely. Sorry, Winnemucca is the only one of those communities that is in Congressional District 2. You know that uh, we have a gerrymandered district here in District 2. Uh, the way that the legislature did it, they gave a completely safe seat to the Democrats in Las Vegas. They gave a completely safe seat, which is CD2, to the Republicans here in the North. And then they have the two that are kind of 50-50 seats. So even when people ask me about running in this primary, the primary is actually the race. Whatever Republican wins the primary will be the next congressman, um, more than likely. Uh, it's a great pros probability that that's what will happen. And so running against a Republican in this race doesn't mean that we lose a Republican seat. It only means that the people get to choose the best Republican for so, this seat. So we'll start a little earlier because your background is mm -hmm. really a lot of politics. How old were you when you first started in politics? <laughs> I was actually retired. I, I was a school teacher. Okay. Um, for 25 years, I taught in all kinds of educational places. I, I taught public. I taught private. I homeschooled. I had a community college class that I taught. I even tutored for juvenile justice uh, doing uh, with uh, what juvenile offenders need, which is to get themselves back on track with their education. So I've had a lot of educational experience. And that's, of course, why I ran for the school board. I thought it was a perfect fit. And I was my my children were grown by that time, graduated from high school and I needed, uh, this is uh, perhaps a little humorous story, but my, my son 
told me that he couldn't live at home and uh, unless I obeyed two conditions. I thought that was interesting since I was paying the bills that he would have conditions. And his conditions were, the first one is, Mom, you have to get a life. And the second one is, it can't be me. And so that's when I began to run for politics and, and got elected to the uh, legislature. And I remember one evening I returned home about 1030. He met me at the door and he says, Mom, are you ever going to cook dinner again? And I <laughs> said, Oh, honey, I got a life and it isn't you. And so that's, that's really, I encourage a lot of people who uh, have raised their families and are moving now into a different place in their lives to consider service to their, their country. And p- uh, political service is one of those places. How old was your son at the time? He was 23. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no no dinner. You miss it. You're busy. That, no, I, I know that you've done really well, and you've won a lot of elections. Yes. So in your first ele- did you win your first election? I did. Congratulations. I did, yeah. I, I've, ru- I've run 14 times and won 11 elections. That is really, and really so good, some, actually. As some people say, wow. oh, you're just a loser, because what they remember is the last... Uh, election in 2010. Yes. I was in Afghanistan. But I had a win before I had a loss there. I was in Afghanistan. I'm civil military operations, working uh-huh. in the State Department, the military, the provincial governors. I came in from the field of Bagram to watch the elections that night. And it was an interesting election. And unfortunately, yeah, it you, was, I, I really was pulling for you back then. It was, a, it was a hard election for me. At six o'clock, I had a party here in Reno and we had victory at six o'clock that evening. And the... Um, Exit polls had all showed me up by at least four points, and most of them had me up by almost 15. So I went on a plane so that I could visit the other end of the state and and be there for their party as well when I got off the plane at 7.10, which means the polls closed right. at 7. At 10 after 7, they had pronounced Terry Reid the winner. And I said, how does that happen? I called a friend who was an exit poller at the time and asked, and he said, Sharon, I can count everything but cheating. And every race that I counted, and there were 10, he did exit polling in, in Clark County. Every one of those changed by the same factor of 9.3%, which is a statistical impossibility. And it means that, as he said, he had counted everything but the cheating. You know, that's, there's a lot of concern about uh, mm-hmm. Clark County and Las yes. Vegas, the Strip. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the, the Democrat caucuses, that could be a whole discussion in itself, how they set their caucus up at the last yes. minute. Um, the other really strange election, I mean, we're sort of sidetracking here, this is about you, but was <laughs> the, the Democrats' caucus for a president. Yes. That was crazy. With it was, um, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, because it appeared that Bernie had a huge race going. I, my, my sister's actually a Democrat, so. Yes. <laughs> I'm a I'm Republican, so I'm trying to stay neutral. But, but I went well, to her to Bernie uh, Sanders rally. She had, I, he had 4,500 4, people. Hillary, the next week, uh, only had 300 people. The, so something was going the, on. It didn't make issue, sense. The issue, of course, and I've, I've heard a candidate today even say that he didn't believe there was any voter fraud. Well, every American believes there's voter fraud of some, at some level. And if you walk door to door or send out first class mail, you will come up face to face with it. I've sent out quite a few pieces of first class mail. And when they come back, no receptacle or um, undeliverable or deceased then I know that I have to check further right. into that. And often what you will find is that person has been deceased for years, but is still now receiving a sample ballot and yep. has they, voted in the last election. So that's where you begin to say, what, what is yeah. the problem with the integrity of our elections? And I've, um, I've found that to be the case even today as I'm walking door to door, I find at least two or three suspicious ones in every precinct that I walk. Now, in a primary, it should, it should be a fair election. There shouldn't be a problem. But I, I've seen <clears throat> um, in California, well, I saw the Acorn, absentee issue. Acorn was notorious for the way that they hid those votes. So, yeah, you know, whenever we talk then. about an election, I think that that's the first yeah. thing that, that comes to mind is my vote doesn't count because, and then there's all kinds of well, reasons. So I'm, I guess I'm encouraging voters, please get out. Because as we're talking about this primary, we know it's going to be a low voter turnout. Right. Which means that your vote will cost uh, will count even more than it it you normally does because there aren't as many people voting. That's I mean it's fascinating. I didn't mm-hmm. know that you'd won eleven, and that's mm-hmm. huge because the average person 
uh, takes two and a half times to run before mm-hmm. they actually win uh-huh. because they learn. Because usually there's several people running for a seat. Of course. It, I mean, it's it's, it's Yes, and it's I've been in those game. multiples. <laughs> yeah, it's good. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about your life and success principles after the break, but we'll go back and talk about some of your early campaigns. We've got All a second. All right, thank you. So let's take a break. This is Bill, and I want to thank the Silver Sponsors for their financial support for the videos as well as our podcasts. The first person to support us as Silver Sponsor was Ed and Georgette Strom, then Ray and Carolyn Rocha. Other sponsors are U.S. Nuclear Energy Foundation and Gary Duarte. My wife, Karen, is a real estate broker here in Reno, Nevada. Tom Heck for U.S. Senate. Sharon Angle for U.S. Congress. Eugene Hoover for Lieutenant Governor, Brett Jones for Lieutenant Governor, Craig Muller for Attorney General, Wes Duncan for Attorney General, Derek Urar for State Treasurer, Gary Smith, Candidate 16 Senate District, Kim Meyer for Sheriff here in Washoe County, Sherman Box for Sheriff again in Washoe County, Andrew Caldwell for Washoe County School Board Trustee, Aji Shiraji for Mayor of Reno, Eddie Lorton for Mayor of Reno, Washoe County Commissioner Jeannie Herman, Dan Schwartz for Governor, re-elect Mike Clark, Washoe County Assessor. And finally, without their support, we couldn't do things like this. We have literally had this month 20,000 views, and that's because of our marketing and support of the uh, Silver Sponsors. And as you can see, um, overall, we've had 124,000 views for the life of it, 736,000 impressions. Impressions is what you see on the side. You'll find these on uh, websites as well as YouTube and Google. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the second half of this interview. Okay, we're coming back with Sharon. We're going to go jump right into your life and success principles. And you have prayer was your first one. So what's that mean to you? Well, you know, one of the big principles of government is that the person that you're voting for should know that there is a God and that he's not God. Uh, God was in our founding at the very beginning. We have professed our allegiance to God in our in our pledge of allegiance. We say one nation under God. And that means that you should check with the one who has all the answers before you go out and start giving answers. Okay, very good. Integrity. Uh, Personal integrity is a big deal. People want to know that when you give your word, you will keep your word. So I try to make very few promises, but the promises I make, I know I will be able to keep. That's very good. And it's easy to overpromise, and politics especially. That's right. That's right. And um, set priorities. That's a good one. (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, of course, if you've got your priorities in correct order, and I believe that it is God, family, country, that order, uh, you'll, you'll never go wrong. And, and when you begin to prioritize your life, it becomes very stable. You know what direction you're going. You know how long you're going to be there, and you know why you've come. So one of your priorities has been to serve. After, That's after right. you were a teacher, mm-hmm. to the family, and to serve your community mm-hmm. and country. So let's go back to that because you've, like you said, 11 elections. Um, what were that some I of won. the highlights? Uh-huh. Oh, some of the highlights. Well, of course, no one, no one can say that uh, a big highlight is the Harry Reid election. Right. Um, first of all, I had to win a primary in a field of over 12. That was a big primary. 12. I watched yeah, that there primary. Were, there were 12 and there were and three of us. There were three of us that were really in the top running. And for me to come out on top of that was truly, I, I believe, a gift. It was a miracle. It, it, you know, well, there, there is no other way to explain when you have uh, people that will come out and just receive your message and respond. And that's what they did. Uh, so that was, a, that was a highlight. Of course, my first election is always a highlight. When you, when you run, I ran against an incumbent school board member my very first time running against incumbency. They have a 15% advantage uh, just going into the race, and yet I was able to defeat him uh, handily for that seat. Was that in Tonopah? In Tonopah, uh-huh. And then I guess the other one would have been uh, when I was redistricted in 2001, they set me up uh, against a colleague, and they combined our districts. When they combined our districts, they decided that he would be the incumbent of that combined 
district. And they gave it to him, and I won that election by 144 votes. Was that assembly? Yes, it was. So, so which assembly seat was it? It was, what? well, my Most. assembly seat was 29. His assembly seat was 26. They combined the two, sent 29 to Las Vegas, and we both then ran off for 26. So that was the Tonopah area or in Central no, States? No, that's here was, in Reno. Oh, it was Reno? Yes. Oh, okay. Then yes, had, all of my assembly uh, service has been here in reno uh, and in fact in 2000 when we did the redistricting in 2001 i uh held out a vote to send seven seats to expand the district the legislature by six seats sorry six seats four in the assembly two in the senate expand the under the constitution we can do that expand the legislature and give las vegas those six seats what actually happened was, and my opponent, Mark Amaday, voted for this, they took six seats from the north and sent them south. And that's how we got that combined um, se- uh, assembly seat. And that's how the rurals lost their representation uh, strictly as rural representatives. So it was a bad deal. The better would have been to expand the legislature, which we can expand up to 50 seats in the assembly. So we were well within that margin. We would have been up to 46 seats and still had room for expansion. But uh, the Senate Republicans uh, under Bill Raggio and, and his um, fellows, Amaday to be one of those, uh, voted down that plan and, uh, and instead sent the six seats from the north to the south. Wow. But I won that election, so that was exciting. You won, too. Yeah. Congratulations. That's- it's really hard to win elections, folks. Um, it's just a lot of work. Yes, Campaigning it is. is probably the hardest thing. You can- it's also one of the most rewarding and most fun because you actually rub shoulders, go face to face with the people. You really and get to know it, your community. And, and, that's, and that's a good thing. Uh, through that, I always collect emails, and those are very valuable to me. I send an email out on every bill, and I say, how do you feel? I keep a record of that when the lobbyists come in. The correct question, and the one they asked me at the legislature was, how does your constituency feel about our bill? And I was able then to tell them exactly how they felt. So you've gone before email. I was 30-something and a city mm-hmm. councilman, and I was the only one using DOS email. I was yeah. in the military. You could actually use email. No one else used email. or was playing around yeah. with it. Now, Email is a part of politics. So well, you can see and we've kind of morphed from email even to Facebook and Twitter. You know, there's a whole, oh, yeah, and texting is a big deal, too. So email is almost one of those things of the past, and yet it still is a very good way to communicate if you have right. uh, a much more thoughtful message that we want to send out. And what we're doing here, too, we're actually using targeted digital YouTube. Yes. YouTube, <laughs> so people who watch Fox and CNN will actually watch. And at a certain age, we'll watch these videos. Well, and I think you're getting to a younger audience as well, Mm -hmm. because uh, as I talk to younger folks, they're not so much into reading books anymore, but they certainly do like factual video. And uh, documentaries are especially among their favorite things to do. And so whenever we're producing something that has truth in it, they're right with us. That's so true. Um, I had a young officer I know who was 35 and started a uh, social media organization. Mm-hmm. But it's all like 35 and under, and that's all they do is they just they just entrench themselves um, with the video, the social media, and, and uh, podcasting really is huge now. That, but now that, it's getting a little that's right. Older folks are and listening. I on my website SharonAngle.com, I have quite a few videos, and in mm-hmm. fact, I almost daily put up a new video because. Uh, they are pretty powerful. I have a That's a good transition a to look debate. at your website right here. Oh, uh, yeah. You can tell well, us about it. That's well, a front I have, cover. I, that's okay. right. And if you just uh, scroll down just a little bit, you'll see all my press releases. Oh, very and good. that very just organized. tells you, wow. you know, what I've been doing right up to this date. Um, there is a video right next to that. And that is the um, debate that I had with Congressman Amaday. It was kind of an impromptu debate up at UNR. Okay. And uh, it's 43 minutes. I'm getting ready to now put uh, a few little pieces that are two minutes long so you can kind of get the so gist right of it if you bottom, don't want to yeah. watch all, all so uh, 43 you, you minutes home. of it. Let's go mm-hmm. through it real fast. Home. Mm-hmm. This is fast and because we only have a couple minutes left. Sure. And I've got an important question. Okay. Sharing about you. That That's and just my background, and we've already shots. discussed all oh, of that, that right? Well, there's one there that I'm proud of right. with my, me and the president, 
And uh, many people say, does the president endorse you? And I say, well, more importantly, the president said, wow. Sharon, Sharon, she's great. So How I, long ago was this picture uh, taken? Uh, it's, it's about two years old. Wow, good. Uh -huh. good, good. So was he president then or still running? No, he was running, he was running. at okay. that point. He was, uh -huh. Yeah, he's, he's a good mm -hmm. shot. Yeah. And then um, Second Amendment. Uh, that's right. Uh, when we talk about the issues, the number one issue is the security of our borders and the whole issue that surrounds that, which is people who are Ill illegally present here in the U.S. and what, what we're going to do to solve that problem. But the bigger issue, the more definitive issue, is that we have to secure, secure the borders with a wall, with a virtual wall, and with military presence. All three things will probably be necessary in order to have a security. But that's the top issue. The second big issue is guns. And uh, what are we going to do with the Second Amendment? On both of these issues, there's a vast difference between me and Congressman Amaday. First of all, on the first issue, he uh, was, put, and I'll just quote Laura Ingram, she said that he was a part of a small band of uh, liberal Republicans who signed on to a discharge position, which uh, pushes the amnesty agenda of the Democrats and undermines the secure borders of the president's policy. Uh, the second is, of course, the Second Amendment. I have an A rating with the Nevada Firearms Coalition, and he has a C rating with the Gun Owners of America. Uh, it's, it's just a big difference. He voted for uh, Fix Nix, which is a backdoor um, aimed at uh, attacking our Second Amendment rights. That's one that GOA has been uh, warning us about for months, the NRA wasn't even on their radar. So uh, it's they're the two biggest issues in this race. Very good. And I'm in news. We'll go real fast. Uh -huh. News. Yeah, I just, beautiful website. I'm going to go to values. Okay. Because you talked about your values uh -huh. in the campaign. They're very similar, I'm sure. Yes. Well, you know, um, I value life. I, I think, uh, you know, our important papers from this, uh, the founding of our country says that we have the inalienable right to life, liberty, and pursuit right. of happiness. And of course, if you don't have life, you don't have the other two. So <laughs> I put that right at the very this top. This is a beautiful website. This is the best website I've seen. Oh, uh, thank you so much. And this much. is probably your home here. Yes. yes. Breaking your home in Amaday. Uh-huh. And this, I, is, this is by far the best website I've seen. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and I've, I've tried to be very careful with how I portray con the congressman. My aim is not to hurt him, but just to reveal his, um, his record. And with conservative groups, he has a solid F. Uh, conservative Review gives him a 40%. Heritage Foundation gives him a 46%. Club for Growth gives him a 58%. I could go on. As I said, the Gun Orders of America give him a C. He's just not a constitutional conservative. And even many people will say, uh, well, it was, a, it was a, uh, a misquote when he said that he was, he, when he said on Tucker Carlson, I am not a constitutional guy. Uh, but I say it's a Freudian slip because if you look at his record, there's a lot of unconstitutional voting going on. And so he really did tell us the truth. I, I really like how you're using your social media here in videos, too. Oh, um, thank I can you. tell you got some decent equipment. You've got a good mic. Looks like a similar mic to what like we have. <laughs> so really nice. Is it now? Is this what platform? Do you know what platform this is on? Oh uh, well, it's not on YouTube. I don't think. Yes, it, yes, it is, it I do have a YouTube channel. Channel from these, yeah. And I do, uh, as I said, you know, out of self defense. Um, after 2010, I learned so much. Oh, yeah. I've learned to edit video myself. I've learned to make what I call guerrilla videos. Right. <laughs> they're just, they're pretty, they're and pretty uh, yeah. rough, but, but uh, they get the job done. And yes, of course, yes. you can help me. Uh, even in these last few days, you know, every dollar counts. I can get one more commercial up. I can get one more right. uh, paid for posting, uh, boosted post on Facebook right. or uh, right, right. Or an so you have ad. Facebook site here somewhere too. Yeah. But anyway, we got to finish up. I okay. Ask, we're gonna ask, we're gonna ask, how can the voter get a hold of you? <laughs> well, SharonAngle.com. There's a contact button. You went kind of yeah, by fast. that on the on oh, there, so but it's that really beautiful website. that email comes right directly into my email, so I see those so every day. Uh huh. Contact. So Just, contact off the right, and we'll show you. That's this. right. So and Facebook's can. another good way. You know, go friend, like, share. On Facebook, all of those things we're posting daily, sometimes a couple of times daily as, right, as yeah. issues right, pop. Campaign, mm -hmm. Look closely. It'll be interesting to see how you do. 
Mm-hmm. And um, but anyway, we're going to break from the campaign. I've got a really important question. I didn't All even right. ask you this ahead of All time. Right. This is a surprise. Uh, I've been in Reno forever. Where, where's the best place to eat? Where do you like to eat here? <laughs> That's hard. I'm sure oh, my is. gosh. Now somebody's going to hate me, right? Yeah, right, because you're not going <laughs> to mention If I don't them, name you know everybody. everybody. Uh, but I, I do love to eat. And I, I guess my favorite place is all you can eat sushi at Sushi Rose. <laughs> 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 Reno is so, so strange. There's like tons of sushi here. It's like LA. It is. I know. I, how did this get so sushi here? There's more sushi. Su- sushi. I can't even speak. More than Sacramento, that's for sure. Like I don't know, s- but I, I love to eat. So sushi is my sushi, only, yeah. only. but they, they are right there in my neighborhood. So, so where, I like to where eat. Where are they? I, it's called Sushi Rose. That's funny. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've been to, to lots and lots of places. In fact, I'll tell you the best sushi is in Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> it is on yeah. the, uh, on Main Street in Fallon. Their they are, their muscles are to die for. So no, we're not that you know, far from San Francisco. So I right. guess we can get from the Bay. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. It, that, you know, it, and and I'll tell you also, there's a great place in Elko, uh, and this is uh, bask eating at its finest. Bass, so yeah, there's a lot of star. Is, you you got to go to the Star if you're in Elko. Yeah. So uh, you know, I can recommend places all throughout my district that are just yeah. wonderful places there, to eat. We probably have a lot of bass too because I think a lot of my Miners came in the early days. Right, yeah. right. That's why we have so many Basque restaurants. Well, actually, they're shepherds. Oh, shepherds. They too. were brought in from the, the from shepherd. the Pyrenees to herd sheep. Here, our our uh, climate good is good for sheep. You know, our our range is good for yeah. sheep. Yeah, no, it's definitely mm-hmm. uh, sheep or elk mm-hmm. or not mm-hmm. elk, but the horn horn um, big horn sheep. Big horn yeah, sheep they too. they are here naturally. Yeah. That's right. Really famous. Like I said, it can be beautiful. In the, and they are our state animal, right. the big horn sheep. Well, very good. Thank you. I was really um, pleased. It was fun to have the interview today. Well, thank good you luck. so much, Bill. And thanks for once again having me here. Even though I'm the last one, sometimes they say you save the best for last. All right, right? Sharon. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm Sharon Angle, running for CD2, and I want your vote, Bill. Very good. All right. Very good. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for watching. Go ahead, and if you're not signed in, sign into your Gmail. Go right up here and subscribe to RMC TV. And go over here, watch a couple more videos. Link to our website at republicanmenisclub.org. And finally, make sure you go down and leave a comment. The comments really help. See you on the next video.